So in this video, I'm talking about the Apple Watch, specifically the Series 6 and all the announcements that Apple made earlier this week. I'm gonna kind of go over the presentation, just some of the key points and show you some of the wacky things that they have said, some of the bold claims, some things that you shouldn't be tricked into, right? They do a lot of different marketing tricks. Apple is incredible at doing stuff like that. So go to the first clip. And it's so reassuring for millions of customers that Apple Watch has introduced great health features like heart monitoring, cycle tracking and fall detection, and even the ability to take an ECG. They always talk about their ECG feature, which is great. However, there are so many companies out there that are doing so much more with the ECG. The only thing that Apple is really doing is a 30 second monitor uh, monitoring window, right? There's no extensive monitoring. They just kind of threw that in there so that they can say that we have this function. The same thing that they did in SPO2 uh, in this presentation, but they're not really doing a lot with that information. They have an HRV feature on the app, but they're not using it. So there are so many companies that are actually using that feature. It's such a helpful feature. I'm not really sure why they don't do anything with it, but hey, I don't work there. So now let's go to the second one. This is just me nitpicking here. So Apple obviously does an incredible job of marketing. And what they do is they bring in some of their customers, don't think they are, but uh, just for the purpose of the video, and they show the ways that Apple Watch health features have helped them. And this one in particular kind of threw me off a little bit. My name is James. We were sitting in the living room and I glanced down at my watch because it kind of vibrated. It flashed increased heart rate. By the time we got to the hospital, my heart rate was 206. And she said, sir, you're going into cardiac arrest. So I'm pretty sure that if your heart rate gets to 206, uh, you don't really need a watch for that. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're aware. So uh, great videos though. I'm not gonna say, not gonna take that from them, but so next clip. Their patients, customers, and employees. Recently, the Mount Sinai Health System in New York launched the new Warrior Watch study. Using data from Apple Watch, researchers are studying the impact of COVID on the psychological well being of frontline healthcare workers by identifying early signs of stress while also looking to predict infection before symptoms appear. Okay, so that statement really bothers me. A lot of health companies out there are now taking this angle on COVID and that we are monitoring to try to predict potential COVID symptoms or if you're asymptomatic. This is very troublesome because first of all, nobody has been able to get a hand on this COVID situation, right? Everything that has come out about it has changed drastically week to week. And let me tell you, working in a health technology company, there really is no way that you can definitively say that we can predict. There are ways that maybe could be a precursor or, but to, to use the word predict uh, and stress, let's be real, Apple is not doing any of that, okay? And to say that we're partnering with Singapore, uh, one of the best health care technology countries in the world, I mean, that doesn't really mean anything. I think it's dangerous because Apple does have a lot of clout uh, in the world and for them to say something like that, don't buy it. So don't buy it if you're thinking, oh, I, this could help me detect COVID because you, you just throw $400 in the toilet. So next, this this one is my favorite. Automatic hand washing detection recognizes the motion and sound when washing your hands and encourages you to continue for the recommended 20 seconds. So a watch feature that helps you wash your hands. Good, I guess. So moving on. On the inside, Series 6 is packed with incredible technology, including a new health sensor that enables an amazing new capability. Let's take a look. We don't have to watch that whole thing, but Apple finally, finally gets an SPO2 sensor on their Apple Watch. It's been a long time coming, but I think they're kind of late to the party, but hey, better late than never. There are dozens 
uh, if not hundreds of products out there that already do SPO2. They're a little behind the curve on that one, but, but we'll give it to them. Apple does a great job of display and overall design. So I guess we won't fault them for that. Not a huge deal, right? Given the fact that everyone else already has it on their products. So now our next clip. Because of its energy efficient design, Series 6 has an even better always on display. Series 6 also features a new always on altimeter. Speaking of that altimeter that actually just monitors your elevation level, this is, it's so off, I took it out on a hike one time, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but that's what it showed me. If you can't see that, I'll put up the image. It says 281 million feet in the air. That's, that's pretty impressive. I actually got up that high. Wow, I mean, it's a great, good, good, good feature. Next up. Always been a great way to personalize your Apple Watch. Another is interchangeable bands. Now, traditional watch bands have a clasp or buckle, and they're limited to a few preset sizes for fit. Well, today, we're excited to introduce something completely different. We call it the Solo Loop. I mean, he looked so excited, he was about to pull himself. Adjustable bands. I mean, who cares? I mean, look, I feel like they're probably running out of ideas. Uh, great that they added an SPO2, but now they're just trying to kind of spice up the event. So next up. We are proud that all of our corporate operations worldwide are carbon neutral. Now, I, I don't know who, look, it's great, but I don't know who really cares about the environment when they're buying a product, right? And maybe this is kind of a feel good thing that when you buy an Apple, you're donating to all these things, right? That's essentially what they're trying to do is say, look, if you buy an Apple, then you're contributing to better environments. This year, we wanted to push the Apple Watch workout experience even further. So we are creating amazing workouts with incredible music delivered by the world's best trainers. This is the first fitness service built around Apple Watch. What do you know? I think this was the big finale for Apple was to launch a new service. So Apple is trying to be like many other companies and try to put their foot in as many different service areas as they can. Their very first one was obviously the cloud, which was very useful. Fitness plus, man, that's a tough sell to me. I think so essentially what they're doing is on-demand training that connects to all your devices. If you have an Apple TV, you have an Apple Watch, the data from your Apple Watch actually streams on the TV, which is kind of cool, but I just gotta say, please do not forget about your local gyms and your local trainers that rely on people, customers, everyday people to come in and get their services. Do not substitute that to get the Apple Fitness Plus membership. It's a little bit more expensive, but keep it in the community because these people at gyms, they work so hard to just come in and have a multi-billion dollar company say, hey, we're gonna do this all on the TV. First of all, it's not the same. Yes, the price is better. It's more convenient, but you're also, there's also a more likely chance that you will not use it all the time. So don't forget about your local gyms and trainers. So yeah, that was it, uh, quick video and uh, we're gonna be doing many more.